Hello and welcome back to the Cloud AI Journey exclusive series with Hewlett Packard Enterprise. My name is Savannah Peterson coming to you from our Palo Alto studios today. Very excited to be breaking down the third interview in this series, one conducted with Brad Parks here with my co-conspirator and co-analyst Rob Stretchy joining us from Boston, Massachusetts today. Rob, thank you so much for taking the time and welcome. You know, it's so great to be here with you and be able to break this down. I, I think this has been fun, uh, you know, definitely fun for me. And I think uh, a lot of really great information we're getting across. Yeah, you know, and you have a lot of history with some of these guests. I know you and Brad have known each other for two decades, and I can see why you enjoy his insights and friendship so much based on the interview that we were able to do recently. We're going to go ahead and play some of those clips back like we've been doing throughout this series. The first of those segments being his inspiration for Morpheus and the boomerang effect that brought him back to HPE. Let's go ahead and play that. You know, I was talking with the founding team and, and it just got me excited. They actually were a internal digital transformation engine inside my former boss's $4 billion private equity firm. They were in charge of modernizing applications, deploying new workloads, doing things like analytics and being an internal service provider and application farm for dozens of companies. And if you start to think about the, the challenges in the enterprise, that's what enterprise IT is trying to do. They want to be a better service provider for their business. So Morpheus was born by practitioners. Now we're selling and then providing capacity to those same types of teams in the enterprise. All right, Rob, you've known Brad for a long time and have seen him both through probably the first HPE journey, the Morpheus journey, and now back at HPE since that acquisition. What do you think about this clip? Yeah, I, I think, again, we've known Morpheus their entire life. Uh, I've known them uh, since Brad went over there and uh, with the founder and, you know, really that whole journey of North, that North Star for Morpheus around always bringing things together, automation, operationalizing, very complex VM and container environments uh, with all of the other infrastructure pieces really tied together. Uh, that North Star is so integral to what Morpheus brings to HPE in this hybrid cloud world. Uh, I, I think, you know, again, it, it's, it did make a lot of sense. And I think I said it when the acquisition was announced that this was probably, uh, a, you know, a key, especially when you look at the complementary nature to OpsRamp that Morpheus brings. Yeah, there's a lot of parallels in these stories and something that I've been very impressed with with HPE across this series is their ability to acquire companies and optimize them and roll out their best attributes and feature sets within the organization and the platform versus isolate or dissolve that technology. We heard the same story and actually Brad mentions it in this interview talking about how his last seven months have been in the company post acquisition. Let's take a look. You know, oftentimes small companies come into a big company and they kind of just get absorbed into the Borg and they evaporate. One of the exciting things for me is, you know, our, our co-founder, head of engineering, you know, former CEO, rather than just being tucked into the, the Borg, we're now actually overlaying the entire Morpheus software stack across the HPE portfolio. And he has, 5x the amount of developers to bring to bear to, to make that real inside HPE. And very, very quickly, we are becoming the standard software platform that is powering the entire HPE private cloud portfolio. So that is very exciting for me. And I think it's just a, you know, a good validation, you know, of, of conversations I've had with Hong over the last couple of years. I've known Varma for the last few years. You know, we had a lot of OEMs and service providers that actually used Morpheus and OpsRamp together. So it it just feels right and we are we're off and running. You know, I gotta say, it seems like he's just as excited as Varma was and just as enthusiastic about the partnership. Rob, what do you think? Yeah, I, I think again, it, you know, HPE definitely has been focusing down this path of really 
optimizing hybrid infrastructure, hybrid cloud, as we like to say, cloud is not a place, it's an operating model. And I think really bringing things like OpsRamp and Morpheus together has really been critical to where they're going and where they are and how they're going to get there in the future because I think that helps bring the different pieces of operationalizing uh, all the way down to the network layers where you can do configuration and optimization in the Morpheus layer of that full stack while you're going and understanding on a day-to-day -day basis what's happening from a telemetry perspective within OpsRamp using the AI that's really been a, key part that they've integrated into GreenLake as well. Yeah, there, there is a lot going on. You, you talked about those features. One of the features and offerings we got to dive into a bit with Brad was VM Essentials and really how that's combining the work that Morpheus was already doing with the trajectory that HPE is on. Just one of the many synergistic parts of this acquisition. Let's hear what he had to say about that. <laughs> yeah, you asked what the last seven months have been like since acquisition. Well. VM Essentials was, was actually a, a big piece of that. So um, Morpheus for years, for those who don't know us, right? We're an orchestration platform that ties into, you know, bare metal services, hypervisors, Kubernetes clusters, public clouds. We're focused on deploying workloads, bringing IT effectiveness and efficiency up a notch, which means we've integrated with KVM based clouds for a long time. About 18 to 24 months ago, right, Morpheus decided, hey, we, we know KVM very well. We've actually been using it internally for a number of years. We said, hey, we should provide customers with a built-in runtime option if they want one, while still maintaining best-in-class integration with all of these other runtime choices that are in enterprise environments. So VM Essentials really was the culmination of a lot of work Morpheus was previously doing combined with a trajectory that HPE was already on. So the VM Essentials software package that you know, we launched back in December really is just the entry into the Morpheus family. It provides you with basic VM vending with a built-in KVM hypervisor, the VME hypervisor, but it also connects to Brownfield VMware environments. You can almost think of it as the starting point to have a hybrid cloud conversation. You can start with VM Essentials, but then start to get into the full Morpheus feature set. So that's kind of where VM Essentials plays. You know, it seems like a lot of this technological revolution is really coming down to timing. Lots of companies that weren't just jumping on the AI bandwagon, but really have been working towards laying the foundation for what we're experiencing now for a super long time. Rob, what's your analysis? Yeah, I, I think you and I have been on this ride together for a while doing uh, things like KubeCon and other, other events and cloud native events. And I think that one of the things that's really having its moment again is KVM. Uh, I think again, when you look at the new uh, stack, uh, I think HPE is really about choice. Uh, bringing out their own KVM stack. And I think VM Essentials and where Morpheus fits into VM Essentials as kind of a starting point uh, for organizations that are maybe looking at uh, hyper, hypervisor uh, alternatives uh, to things like VMware. Uh, I think where we start to see is that you know, they're not going to get rid of all their VMware. I've talked to organizations that have uh, five different Kubernetes stacks and container stacks, uh, you know, multiple different hypervisors. I, I think if anything else, and I think, you know, Brad definitely, you know, talks about this is complexity is really uh, a key and solving for that complexity that is not just about HPE, but modernizing what people think about HPE and how they think about HPE as being across this larger span. So giving them an early and easy entry with VM Essentials and then letting them grow into that and helping them bring their entire operations together is key for Morpheus and has been one of their key value props uh, all along, even when they were an independent company, but now even greater that they're part of HPE. 
Yeah, I think I think you're absolutely right. What you're talking about is that embedding of features across the across the platform, and and the the benefits that that provides for all of HPE's customers. It's it's compelling and it makes sense. Don't take the best pieces of what everyone's doing together and provide the the most compelling solutions for the community. You know, I was impressed given the, the time period that we're living through right now in technology that we made it as far through this interview with Brad Parks as we did without saying AI. This next segment or this next clip rather, is about AI, how it affects their product roadmap, and how it really just comes down to runtime flexibility and different style workloads. We have been focused on, on helping IT teams orchestrate, provision workloads into their environments, run things like automation, do application blueprinting. Well, let's, let's put that focus on AI, right? What, what is the enterprise trying to do, right? They're going to be using different runtimes to meet different needs, and they don't want to be locked into any one runtime. They're going to be tying into third-party stacks from folks like NVIDIA and others, blueprinting applications so they can repeatedly deploy those in an automated way as part of pipelines, in this case, AI pipelines, running automation jobs to do things like training. Well, all of a sudden, uh, you know, an AI stack sounds an awful lot like a Morpheus stack. So if we look at, at Morpheus within the HPE portfolio, we are providing the underlying runtime flexibility and portability for customers within things like PC AI, but also in some uh, higher end deployments for very large enterprises who may have thousands of GPUs, but still need orchestration, automation, guardrails to make sure data scientists stay in their lane, but IT doesn't get in their way. These are concepts that are not new for IT. They're not new for Morpheus. We're just now applying them to this amazing new set of workloads that are transforming a lot of enterprises. One of the things that struck me about what Brad was saying in this particular clip is essentially that it's not about the hype. This isn't necessarily a huge challenge for them. As we know, AI workloads are simply different workloads. There's been many different workloads ran on these systems and, and operating cycles for a long time. But I thought this was, was kind of refreshing to see him say, hey, this is no big deal. We're ready to do this. And not, not that it's not challenging. I'm not diminishing the effort necessary there to be successful. But it did seem like just another day at the office and that the Morpheus HPE combo here was really poised to be a great partner for companies during this time period. Rob, what do you think? Yeah, I, I, I think, you know, I, I almost can't say it any better myself, Savannah. I mean, I think again, when you start to look at this, it, you know, Brad goes into and talks about that platform approach to how things are coming together. Uh, that's really that cloud platform. And as you and I both talk to and uh, really espouse, you know, that whole platform engineering where people may be deep in one area, but have to go across and operate across different areas. Uh, that really is similar to what's going on with AI. AIs are, AI is just an application or a piece of an application feature set. Uh, an agent uh, may plug in, it may have multiple different parts to the stack, but ultimately it's part of, contained in this infrastructure, either VMs or containers on storage, and it needs to be you know, resilient. So I think what Morpheus brings there is he kind of talked about the Morpheus stack and an AI stack is really about how you really optimize applications and those blueprints for those applications to make it easy to get up and running and yet connect them all together. Because I don't think these are getting, the AI doesn't make things easier, it makes them more complex and more the reason you need automation. Yeah, absolutely. And you need partners who are there for you to get ramped up and also there to, to build for a much more heavy workload future in, in this case. The last quote that we're going to bring up from Brad is really looking at the overview of the different environments that he's a part of helping customers configure and some of the trends that he's seeing across VMs, containers, and the like. The world is getting more complex more heterogeneous and it's moving faster than you know than ever before yet IT teams are not getting a corresponding increase in people money skills right so the the gap between kind of aspiration and ability to execute is only going to get wider so one of the biggest trends 
that that I see is a focus on on platform thinking and and orchestration and automation within the enterprise. And it it sounds self-serving because that's what we do. But you know, to be honest, I think one of the reasons we've grown in high double digits the last few years as a standalone and why HPE did this acquisition and why we are where we are today is if enterprises are going to scale to meet the needs of, of their business, right? If IT is going to be effective and is going to be efficient, they have to embrace platform thinking, which is the ability to provide end user developers, data scientists with on-demand self-service access to applications. They have to automate how they deal with infrastructure. So that, that trend is very real. Brad's perspective here is really interesting. I, I can't think of too many people who get to see as many different types of things right now as Brad does. Rob, what did you think? Yeah, I think again, to get the ROI out of AI and other applications, really you have to have a, a, a platform engineering approach. And I think that's what Brad was really hitting on here is have an approach that is a hybrid cloud, platform engineering type approach that really means you get investment protection. So you get to use what you have today and use it long term and get across those silos and what he talked about you know about the skill sets that are needed and you know the one thing that we know is that uh you know infrastructure and technology is going to change uh, it seems to be changing every week right at the moment and that stack is going to change and so trying to say i'm going to hire for this or hire for that versus focusing on the platform and taking a platform engineering approach and a cloud approach really is where Brad was going and saying, you know, you got to automate. And I, I think he's dead on with this. I think that again, if you're chasing the technology, uh, you're basically chasing your tail. Uh, and at some point in time, you're going to fall over uh, and your infrastructure is going to fall over. And I think to me, uh, you know, it, it's, it's definitely not uh, something that's sustainable. So I, I liked what he had here to say. And I think, you know, the blueprinting effect and blueprinting approach that they take with Morpheus uh, makes a lot of sense here too, because that's really what people and developers want to get up and running and building their applications really quickly. So, uh, you know, hats off on this. I think this was a key to why HPE went and made this acquisition and why it's such a integral part of so many different uh, parts of HPE's infrastructure now. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's not only, your point is not only confirmed by the social proof of, of HPE's acquisition, but also the, the double digit growth that Brad mentioned has, has been a trend over the last few years over at Morpheus. Very exciting interview across the board. Always a pleasure to break it down with you, Rob. Thank you very much for your insights, both on this interview as well as across our series. I will say, if viewers go back and watch that Brad Parks interview, if they haven't yet, they will learn about his Harry Potter fandom and the magic wand he may have at his house. So hopefully we can see that on our next interview. Rob Streche in our Boston, Massachusetts studio. Thank you so much for taking the time to do these with me, Rob. Uh, it's always great, Savannah. Thanks again. And thank all of you for tuning in to this Cloud AI Journey series exclusive for HPE. My name is Savannah Peterson here in Palo Alto, California. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.